Big time bantamweight pairing on the main card of UFC 280. We have No Mercy Piotr Jan taking on Sugar Sean O'Malley. And holy smokes. I mean, possible title implications oh, yeah. in this matchup for Piotr Jan. He's fighting down in the rankings against Sean O'Malley, who has a giant shot coming off a no contest where he eye poked Pedro Munoz and scratched that cornea. Tickled the old eyeball of that small, small Brazilian man. And for Sean O'Malley... This really is a good step up in competition. I mean, you look at it for him. It's been the slow burn since he debuted in the UFC off Dana White's Contender Series 2017. He goes from fighting Alfred Kashakian to Tarion Ware to then all of a sudden facing some better competition. And for Piotr Jan, coming off a split decision loss in the title fight, the rematch against Aljamain Sterling, where... Maybe it was a little controversial that it was a split due to the fact that Sterling had so much success with just kind of backpacking Piotr Jan for long periods of time in that fight. But for Jan, this is either a good opportunity to get back to the basics, work in your boxing, or it's the opportunity for Sean O'Malley to maybe maybe finally show some of those grappling chops obviously you're gonna have tim welch in the corner but a lot of pictures over on instagram with augusto mendez a guy who was known to get it done at the adccs if you know what i mean but if you look at it on instagram purity on 1.5 million instagram followers sean o'malley one up you checkmate 2.5 million and it looks like for O'Malley acclimatizing himself over in Abu Dhabi he was over at that uh, the preseason NBA games over there for Piotr Jan getting it done at Tiger Muay Thai the OG Jim Zubar Takigov also there and he's on this card as well so Matt I love the pairing I think it's a very very fun fight a possible fight of the night if I've ever seen one and also both these guys featured in a thumbnail for this one and this is the weird thing about this fight I know a lot of people are going to look at the result that Piotr Jan had against Aljamain Sterling say oh split decision it must have been a close fight but like you had said it wasn't really like I didn't think Jan had a great performance in that fight whatsoever and honestly up until that fight I was like okay if you fought Sean O'Malley like what are we doing like they better have a ton of ambulances and paramedics waiting out back because that's how much better Piotr Jan is but he did look a little bit tentative in his last fight against Aljamain Sterling, especially after Sterling was able to get a lot of those takedowns. Now, to be fair, Sean O'Malley is a good grappler. He does have good jujitsu, but the difference is he doesn't necessarily have the pure wrestling chops that a guy like Aljamain Sterling has to go out there and chain wrestle you and really have a lot of these elongated grappling exchanges with you like Aljamain Sterling can. And that's the thing that I have to keep on going back to. Piotr Jan has barely shown weakness in the UFC up until that Aljamain Sterling fight. And that does have to be... Like, I know he had the illegal strike against Aljo too, but, like, Piotr Jan, other than those Aljo fights, well, who's ever beat him striking? Nobody. Like, he Jer got rocked by John Dodson and, and Jin Susan at a competitive fight in a fight of the night. And then he beat the brakes off John Dodson and showed up to a fight against Jose Aldo, and it was, like, the hardest thing I've ever had to watch. Like, I like Jose Aldo because I've been growing up watching a lot of MMA, Piotr Jan didn't like Jose Aldo at, law, at all. He didn't grow up watching him. And that's the, thing that, that's the problem I have with breaking down this fight. I feel like the people who are picking Sean O'Malley are trying to find faith in some of those Aljo performances and trying to find an area that Sean O'Malley can at least replicate and have some similar success in. And I'm telling you right now, I think Sean O'Malley's good at jiu-jitsu. I think he's a good grappler. Piotr Jan has incredible takedown defense, though, and unless you do have the ability to really chain wrestle and go for the single legs and the double legs up against the cage and really make him think about his takedown attempts, think about every other takedown Piotr Jan's ever defended in the UFC. Think about Jimmy Rivera, a guy who's a very talented wrestler in his own right. He would go for takedowns, have wrestling exchanges, if you will, to where they're on the feet, they're kind of wrestling for position, and then what would happen? Piotr Jan would create distance and hit him with his own power shots. But since I bring up the Jimmy Rivera fight, I might as well bring up this other point, which might help Sean O'Malley. Piotr Jan lost 14 and a half minutes of that fight, if being completely honest, but he won 10 seconds in every single round. It was the last 10 seconds of every round where he drops Jimmy Rivera and really hurts him. I know that might be a bit of an exaggeration, but there are two versions of Piotr Jan. There is the... I'm downloading your game plan, Jan. And then there's, I have your game plan downloaded, Jan. And it's really going to be interesting to see when does he download that game plan. Because the last time we saw him have a lot of success against a tall, rangy striker, it was Corey Sandhagen. And we all know how uh, good he is and how skilled he is on the feet. Sean O'Malley and Corey Sandhagen share a lot of similarities. Now, to be fair, Sandhagen likes to get in the pocket and then throw a lot of punches once he's in the pocket, whereas O'Malley is going to make you come to him and try to hit you with power shots, but they do share a lot of similarities in their MMA game. And the other thing for Sean O'Malley versus Piotr Jan, if you do want to go towards Sugar Sean, if you look at Jan, he does take that Floyd Mayweather approach to a lot of his fights. Figure things out, wait as it goes, and then all of a sudden... 
boom goes the dynamite and Piotr Jan's having a lot of success and it is a style that's very conducive to five rounds former ACB champ former UFC Bantamweight champ little asterisk there I bet TJ Dillashaw wasn't happy that uh, Piotr Jan was a Bantamweight I'd champ I'd love to see Yada Dillashaw in the field but if you look at it for O'Malley he does like to get work done very very quickly and you look at it in terms of the all time UFC ranks all time every weight class he is number 5 all time with a 62.4% strike accuracy number 3 all time with a 4.49 strike differential number 2 all time in 7.83 strikes landed per minute the level of competition has gone up incrementally over a long period of time for O'Malley versus Jan who it was what it was and then all of a sudden it was the deep end so for O'Malley he could be in his Piotr Jan phase but for Sean O'Malley his last time against Pedro Munoz I'll admit it I'll admit it I didn't pick Sean O'Malley to beat Pedro Munoz who was like a plus 260 underdog because I thought that Pedro Munoz would have a ton of success with the leg kicks and boy was I yeah boy was I right in the first round of that fight because Matt Piotr, or, or Pedro Munoz landed 26 total strikes in that fight. He went 26 of 41 in terms of significant strikes. It's a decent percentage. And every single one of those strikes was leg kicks. All 26 were leg kicks. First round, Munoz won. A lot of people were like, Craig, you're It was insane. close, to be fair. Sh- Neither Sean guy really pulled apart. In the second round, Sean O'Malley started to pull away. He started to have a lot of success distancing himself away, landing his jab, and then landing his finger in Pedro's eye. And if you don't believe it, well, Zai was swollen shut and he had a scratch cornea. So it was legit. But Matt, when we look at this matchup, for jiu-jitsu's sake, Sean O'Malley has it. For the master of uh, sport in boxing and mixed martial arts, Pedro, Mu- or Pedro Munoz jumped into me. Piotr Jan can really mix it up with the best of them. The best part for Jan is his pitter-patter in and out to mix in his boxing combinations and to go from the body to the head. It might look a little comical in our picture there, the height discrepancy. It is only four inches, but the hair adds some volume for Sean. There's a part of me that thinks Piotr Jan is going to fight this fight like he fought uh, 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 your boy, uh, Andrade de Silva. Silva de Andrade. He got on top of him, got him into crucifix, and ground and pounded him into the ground. Like, just kept on taking him down and really showcased his own offensive grappling. That's the thing about Piotr Jan. Even if you are low on him based on his last performance and getting out grappled by Aljamain Sterling, Aljamain Sterling is a UFC championship caliber fighter. And a collegiate wrestler to boot. And also specializes with his grappling. So if anybody's going to grapple you, it's probably going to be someone like Aljamain Sterling. When you think about Sean O'Malley's game at the championship level, you probably don't think about Sean O'Malley triangle choking a lot of guys off his back or getting a lot of rear naked chokes. Yes, he can get those techniques, but a lot of the times that's going to be a result of him hurting his opponent and then following up with a submission or something like that. I just don't think Sean O'Malley can go out there and really control Piotr gone for a lot of time and if that's the case it means he's gonna have to have success in his striking now i think it can because he is so tall and rangy for this division we all know how good his punching power can be but Piotr Jan's not a guy who gets hit clean all that much like i know you bring it up he got rocked by john dodson on a weird in-between shot up against the cage but John Dawson is some of the best punching speed, at least, we've ever seen up until that point. And the one blip on the radar is enough for me to really worry that this is going to become some overall issue with Piotr Jan every fight he's going to have. Matt, if you have a look at the odds in this matchup, Jan open to minus 250 favorite, minus 313 as it stands now in best fight odds. For Sean O'Malley, opened up a plus 210. He's plus 245. We have a look at the topology vote. Surprise to us as they are to you. I'm going to say over... 77 and under over 77 and a half percent i think it'll be over for young it's gonna be over oh boy it's slightly over 1292 total votes 79 percent yawn 38 percent by decision 55 percent by knockout for the 21 percent that have o'malley 43 percent by decision 47 percent by knockout again like letter kenny pitter patter let's get at her i think pure Jan's gonna have success on the in and out and the in-betweens with his boxing sean o'malley i didn't bring up those all-time ufc record numbers that he has for no reason he also has great volume it's just in some of these exchanges i see on winning out i also like the stance switches and the leg kicks and i can't stress that one enough as a point where i leave on this one i agree with you on all the pewter yon uh, points i also have him to win this fight but i can just see there being a world where dana white shows up to a press conference looking as red as your shirt going sean o'malley isn't he fucking awesome he wants to fight al Jermaine in long island i fucking love that kid i can see it be one of those cases where dana white's like really trying to pump his tires too much but i also appear to go into this matchup both of us going with no mercy piotr Jan, 
Make sure you tune in at the Fight Night Pick Sidekick live for the main card. We'll be in action. Maybe we'll have a couple of Colorado Kool-Aids with us as we tune in for this big time card. Two title fights up at the top. You're not going to want to miss. Keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks. We always say, let's get into it.